hey, uh, would you like to be eating more carbs? Are carbs the devil? Uh, will carbs put on belly fat? When can I eat carbs? What kind of carbs can I eat? There's this whole thing about carbs being not good for you and this whole keto diet um, craze right now. So I'm just bringing on Coach Perry and hopefully she can just get join us. And we're going to talk about carbs today because there she is. Hi, good morning. Uh, just uh, for those people that have not met Coach uh, Perry before, Coach Perry is precision nutrition trained, a busy mom, works full time, has a nutrition coaching program on top of all that she does. I, I keep forgetting to mention, are you currently doing um, like uh, physique contests or is that something you've done in the past? Are you preparing for that in the future? Um, yeah, I've done it in the past and right now I'm like, um, what's considered my off season. So I'm just kind of building a little bit more muscle, but um, we'll probably be competing um, in the late summer, early fall time frame this year. So the thing about that is, and I just want to kind of take an aside before we talk about carbs, is that while being a physique model is not for everybody, what I've learned from it is that, man, you learn how to eat. Yes. Efficiently, <laughs> for energy, and to look good. I mean, the thing about physique, um, any kind of physique contest is that, um, you know, you have to train hard, but you also have to be able to eat to fuel your body because otherwise you're just not going to look good. You're going to get that skinny, fat, melted candle look, which is definitely not what you're going after. Right. Yeah. And I would say nutrition is 80% of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm so happy to have you on this page because it's really, you know, it's not book smarts. While you have the book smarts, mm -hmm. you have all the tips and tricks to feeling full and satiated and cooking delicious food because you're walking the walk on a much tighter line than most of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you're doing it while working full time, while being a mom, while traveling for work, although maybe there's a little less of that hopefully yes, in your future. Hopefully. <laughs> right? yes. yes. So anyway. So that's Coach Perry, and uh, we'll give you an opportunity to learn how to work cl more closely with Coach Perry and I later. Mm -hmm. But today we're talking about carbs. Yes. What do you think about carbs, Perry? Well, I think, you know, with carbs, especially nowadays and the keto diet, and I know we've kind of touched on that a little bit in the past Facebook Live, I think a lot of people just think that carbs are evil, and they're the devil. And if they eat the carbs, they're, they're going to gain weight, and they're going to get fat, which is, which is not the case. Well, and the thing is, is that while everybody thinks carbs are the devil, mm -hmm. typically when they fall off an eating plan, what do they eat? Carbs. Carbs. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I am of the mind, and everybody has to find what works for them, but I'm of the mind that it's not necessarily healthy long term. Mm -hmm to be cutting out a complete macro group. Yes. So when you're on a keto style diet, you're having about 20 carbs a day, typically, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and that's all Which from is... vegetables. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, I had a half a head of cauliflower and I had a heaping plate of cauliflower and that was 14 carbs. Mm -hmm. And you know what, while I loved it, if that was my carbs that I got to look forward to, just a half a head of cauliflower in an entire day, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd have reason to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> yeah. But that's just me. Yeah, life wouldn't be that fun. <laughs> so um, why do we need carbs, Perry? Um, carbs are good because, I mean, it does fuel the body. You know, you can get um, – I guess, energy from different sources, and carbs is one of them. I mean, you can tap into your fat stores and get energy from there, but, you know, especially if you're working out, carbs are a good source of energy. Right, and, you know, if you are on the ketogenic diet, you do get energy from ketones, mm -hmm. but a lot of people have difficulty getting into ketogenesis. Mm -hmm. And if you kind of, and the thing is, is that if you, you know, blow it and you have 60 carbs in a day, you're not into ketogenesis, so you're kind of in this fog mm -hmm. of, like, transitioning from glucose to ketones mm -hmm. for your energy source. And I've done it before, and, Perry, I felt dumb as a stump because our brain needs carbs for our energy. Correct. That's, the, that's mm -hmm. what we use right. in, for our brain uh, power. So, yes. so 
Um, hey, Anne, good to see you. And Laverne, good to see you as well. Um, and so I know that for me, and I'm just going to go, because it's all about me, um, <laughs> off on a tangent. Last year, I looked at my daily intake and I thought, you know what? I'm not really eating that much. And so I kind of switched around my diet and, and I started eating more carbs and a little less fat because I felt like, you know, you always say, oh, healthy fat is good and, you know, it's all fine. And it was. Mm -hmm. I wasn't gaining weight on it, but I didn't have as much energy and it satiated me so much that I was eating this much. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I switched around my macros and I am eating more than ever. In fact, before I got on this Facebook live with you, Perry, I had three big protein pancakes with carbs. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Yum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Delicious. I mean, as a bodybuilding competitor or physique competitor, um, you know, the way I lean down to such little body fat is I actually will increase my carbs, lower my fats and have high protein. So, you know, carbs right. are, are not bad <laughs> to get lean. So I want to mention too, that you didn't say no fat. Mm -hmm. You just lowered the fat because like the, we were saying before that the, the kind of the devilish um, combination is carbs and fat together. Yes. It is. Right? Do you want to explain that while I tell these guys to try it? <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, um, no. if you put carbs and fat together, um, you know, that is where your body is actually going to st store some fat. You know, you're going to get a rise in glycemic index. Um, and so it's not the best thing to use. Um, you know, if you are going to eat carbs, highly recommend it to eat it with protein, or, but never alone. I would never eat carbs alone. Yeah, I think you need to combine it with protein. Yeah. So your blood right, sugar blood doesn't. Sugar yeah, exactly. So um, that would be the perfect combination if you are going to eat your carbs. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about why we don't want to have that blood sugar spike. Uh, Did we talk about that? Oh, no, 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 we didn't. Yeah. So, you know, if you do have um, carbs, you know, your blood sugar will spike up, which will then cause an increase in insulin. And then that gets into the body and... Um, your blood sugars are raised and, you know, that's where fat is stored. Right. Because when we have elevated insulin and coach Katie and I were talking about this yesterday because we were saying how cinnamon can moderate mm. um, stabilized blood sugar. And we were just saying that you can never lose fat when insulin is present. Yes. And so that's why we don't want to have these spikes and valleys of blood sugar. We want to have these rolling hills um, so no insulin spikes, and then it, we're going to be able to utilize fat as an energy source much more effectively. All right, so we've established carbs are great for energy. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. kind of carbs? Um, this is the caveat. Yes. Well, I always consider vegetables kind of like a free-for-all. I don't even really consider them like when I in my diet. I don't really factor in the amount of grams yeah. of carbs that I put in there. Um, but I think if you're talking about starchy carbs or your complex carbs, I think that's where everyone thinks those are evil. Um, and I think you really need to get some good sources of carbs. Um, so staying away from anything that's white, so white bread, anything that's processed, um, and really yep, going into like brown rice would be good, quinoa, oatmeal. Um, those do not raise your blood sugar as high as some of the white counterparts, as I call them. Yeah. 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 And then um, what about fruit? Oh, so fruit, I kind of consider a starchy carb. It, it kind of acts the same way in the body. So it's not the same as a vegetable. It has a higher sugar content. And even though it's all natural, um, you really have to look at what it does to the body when you, you know, consume it. Um, and so I typically won't eat as much fruit. And I know it causes a little bit of controversy. But I usually will allow myself like maybe one serving a day. Um, and I stick to things that are like berries that have more fiber. They're more superfoods um, versus yeah. like a banana, which is um, really high in sugar. So, I mean, if we're picking between a banana and a donut, we know what wins. Right. But if we're picking between, say, a peach and a banana or berries and a banana, mm -hmm. then we're going to go for those lower glycemic carbs. And, the, and what's great about uh, working with you and I, Perry, is that sometimes, like, there's tips and tricks, like a nectarine mm -hmm. has way more carbs than a peach. Mm -hmm. Right. Honeydew or watermelon has way more carbs than cantaloupe. So, so we can kind of find, uh, kind of fine tune the carbs that you're eating. Mm -hmm. So, that, hey, you're still eating fruit, 
but maybe you're going to eat a strawberry in, or a raspberry instead of watermelon right. or that sort of thing. So, uh, so that's really important. Yes. Now, when is the best time to have carbs? Okay. So I, I have found that you probably want to keep your carbs um, primarily in the first half of the day. Um, if you're going to eat those starchy carbs. So I wouldn't recommend having, you know, a big plate of rice for dinner because <laughs> that's just going to spike your insulin levels and you go to sleep. And so it's not helping you any. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing it in the beginning part of your day. So you have time to kind of burn them off. Um, the other thing is if you work out and if you are a weightlifter like myself, um, I try to surround my carbs around my workout. So before to give me energy to lift and then afterwards to replace the, um, the glycogen that I've lost by working, you know, the muscle. And so it actually will refeed as I call it the muscle. Um, and it'll be good, um, to maintain lean body mass. Exactly. And I mean, th there is, I mean, insulin is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to have insulin and there's a good time to have a slight bump in insulin. And that is after our workout, mm -hmm. because when we have a little bit of insulin, it's kind of like there's these little windows that we can get, we can stuff our muscles full oh. of, it's called glycogen so that our muscles get replenished so that we'll have energy for the next day. Right. So th the trouble is, is that when we sit down to a big bowl of popcorn or potato chips at nine at night, yeah. when we're not using the energy, we get an insulin spike. Anytime, has anybody ever noticed how sleepy you get with carbs? Oh, like yeah. that's, you know, right? Yes. Like, and so, I mean, that's the perfect recipe for putting on belly fat is nighttime carbs when you're not, you know, using them when you haven't just exercised because our body is so miraculous. It's like, I'm just going to save these for a rainy day and it never rains. We never have mm -hmm. that starvation where we're going to need it. So um, what else did we, what else were we going to talk about with carbs? We were going to talk about the combination, when, what, how, why, how much. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Perfect. Though I do see that Anne has a question. So um, just since so, so we're talking about it, so as if you're working out in the afternoon, can you have your carbs for dinner? Um, you can. Um, and I think this goes along with the quantity that I'll be talking about as well. Um, I think, you know, if you're just doing a leisurely walk or, you know, something that's maybe lower intensity, I don't think carbs is as important. And I would kind of steer clear from it. Um, and, but if you are lifting heavy or something that's, you know, high intensity, then yes, you can surround your carbs around that workout and that, that should be fine. Yeah. And, and works out really hard. Okay. And so, <laughs> and, yeah, I would suggest, you know, but, but the fist is a great example yes. of you're saying vegetables unlimited, mm -hmm. but is it the, the fist? Yeah. The starchy carbs about the size of your fist. So this size of potato or you're going to have like quinoa, this size of, uh, for starchy carbs, mm -hmm. about the size of your fist. I mean, there's the open palm of vegetables, but I'm like, go to town on the vegetables as long as they're not like sauteed or, you know, covered in salad dressing. Right, right. Yeah. And, right? you know, and the size of your fist is a, roughly around half a cup. So I'm a little bit more anal. I measure out my food. But, um, <laughs> but yes, if you're like yeah, at a restaurant, too. then yeah, using your fist is a good um, kind of good point of reference. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what I like about using the palm as uh, a guide is that a smaller person typically has a smaller size palm. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can say a protein about the size of your palm, a starchy carb about the size of your fist, a fat serving about the tip of your thumb, mm -hmm. uh, and then unlimited vegetables as far as I'm concerned, as long as they're not you know, the starchy variety are covered in oil or salad dressing or sauteed and sauces mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. And that's a good point, Shauna, you know, because I think everyone thinks all vegetables are created equal. And so, you know, I'll have clients and say, yeah, I had a big bowl of spaghetti squash. And I'm like, well, that's probably better than spaghetti. But at the same time, right. that one is, I kind of consider that more of a starchy complex carb. Starchy carb. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Pea, legumes, um, corn mm -hmm. more starchy right? right compare that to a green bean or romaine lettuce or spinach or you know so so it's important to uh while it's better to be having that spaghetti squash than maybe a massive bowl of like wheat pasta mm -hmm. there's ways to fine-tune that as well and that's what i love about you know when you've got a coach to 
be like this, not that. Right. Because lots of times people think, you know, I'm eating really well and I'm not getting the results. And it really bothers me when people are putting in the effort when just a slight, slight tweak, mm -hmm. eat the peach instead of the nectarine. Well, how easy is that? You're not right. going to, you're pretty much eating the same thing. But just one slight tweak is going to make all the difference in the results because sometimes that wiggle room is pretty small. Mm -hmm. So uh, I interrupt. Uh, we didn't get to how many carbs. Oh, yeah. No, I would say, you know, depending on your activity level um, and how many meals, you know, I typically eat every three to four hours, kind of like smaller meals. And so I would say, you know, two to three of those meals, you can actually have, you know, the size of your fist. Um, and that yeah. roughly is, you know, 50 to 75 grams of carbs if you're, if you're adding and doing the math on that. So that's a good number. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was so pleasantly surprised when I started eating more carbs because I got leaner. I lost belly fat. Mm -hmm. My performance for my workout went through the roof because I had increased energy. Mm -hmm. And so, like, bring on the carbs. But with healthy moderation, you know, right. with a couple caveats. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I've noticed too, is just being a coach is, you know, I will have some clients that are a little bit more sensitive to carbs and so maybe they can't eat as much. So it's kind of nice, you know, if you actually have a coach that can work one-on-one -on -one with you because, you know, you may be more carb sensitive and maybe sensitive. can't have as much. And, you know, we really kind of just do it by trial and error, kind of like, you know, what your body composition is made up so you know there's little things that we can tweak individually right and all those things are really important your activity level when do you work out mm -hmm. uh what do you do for work i mean a mail carrier and somebody that works at a desk is going to have a much different uh need for nutritional need right and so and and really need for energy so it's really great when you can fine tune and you know have that direct accountability so for the people in the healthy hormone challenge even people in shauna 24 7 that are you know part of our membership um uh, reach out to me we can do a coaching call in terms of what it's going to look like to work with coach perry or coach katie we've got a couple people that have jumped on board with that and i'm super excited so happy to have you on the page any final words about carbs perry just that, you know, when used wisely, I mean, it can actually really enhance, um, you know, the way you look, the way you feel, um, and that is quality of life. Quality of life. Yeah. You know, just kind of to sum it all up and it's not the devil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And while I don't want to bash anything like the keto diet, mm -hmm. but I do want to, because I feel that the keto diet for some people will work for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. but it's probably not a long-term strategy. I would much rather have, have people um, discover a, a eating strategy that's not really considered a diet because Perry, you and I are all about the non-diet diet. That's right. It's a lifestyle and that you can maintain, yes. you know, and be happy and have yes. some moderation. <laughs> Yes. I'm actually going to, I never really like to blow my own horn, but I thought, you know, I really have to show that healthy living is really what it takes um, long term. And so I just posted a picture on Instagram of when I was 25 and 45 and almost 55. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is that you can maintain your, your health and improve your health no matter what age you're at. It doesn't matter if you have visible abs or not. Like, not everybody's going to get to that point. Right. That's, that's irrelevant. But the fact is, is that uh, you're, we not want to be playing the long game. We don't want it because the diet means that we start something and then we typically stop it. Mm -hmm. And we fall off the wagon. Then we go down a rabbit hole of weight gain and self, like, beating ourselves up and then it's like pulling yourself up and we don't want that right we want to have more sustained um you know healthy eating where we're energized and you know just feeling good long term so i'm off my soapbox yeah I will post that <laughs> yeah yeah so. and then you know this whole yo-yo dieting thing i mean it can really wreak havoc Kills. on the metabolism, metabolism too so yeah right yeah, because then you start from a lower set point. Mm -hmm. So then you have this metabolism down here. And what I've found that since I started eating carbs back on the carb bandwagon, yeah. since I started eating carbs, 
my metabolism, like I'm hungry. Yes. My, and it's a good sign when you're hungry. And it's not just like, I'm hungry for broccoli. Like I'll eat healthy food. Like we have to get in touch with our appetite. Intuitive eating is really important. Mm -hmm. But I'm hungrier than I was when I was eating less carbs and more fat. And so, like I said, it's win-win for me because I get to eat more delicious carbs. I'm getting leaner and I have more energy. Mm -hmm. So we're all on the carb bandwagon. Yes, we so. love carbs. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Perry. Yeah. I'll uh, provide a link for anyone that wants to consider working with Coach Perry or Coach Katie because I really feel like that fine-tuning, mm -hmm. once we've, uh, for our challengers, especially the what now, like I don't want you know, the good eating to stop. We've got to keep it up. So okay. anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, Karen, thanks, Shana. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see you again maybe next week um, for a Facebook Live again. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All <laughs> right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.